so a couple of years ago, I, I went to uh, a, a small number of supplement companies and said, help, um, and challenged them to take the supplements that they were making that we had tested and verified were contained what they said they had, and to offer to supply them for clinical trials that, that we were approached about, about partnering on. Um, and not only to supply the material free of charge, but to supply all the documentation and paperwork that would go along with um, an application to an, an institutional review board or to the FDA, in fact, for an investigational new drug application for permission to work on that disease with that compound. Um, and a few companies did come forward. One of them is called Nutramax, and, and they have a product called Avmacol, which they sort of took a, a page from our playbook, and they, they make something with glucoraphanin and myrosinase. Um, and so that's actually been used in a number, quite a large number of clinical trials now. And so I don't think, uh, we've tested it in people, of course. Um, I don't think there's anything ready to be published yet, but those publications will be coming along mm -hmm. very shortly. And, and that actually does contain the glucoraphanin and myrosinase, and you've validated that. Yes, we would certainly not recommend something to anybody without checking it, and we've checked every batch that, that they've put on the market um, okay. because we don't want to be in a position, I don't want to have egg on my face and have right. recommended to, <laughs> to a friend that this is a, a product worth using and then, and then have it turn out to be a dud. So you mentioned the sulforaphane one, which is the, the prostophane, the abmacol, which has the glucoraphanin plus the myrosinase, and then there's the one that just has glucoraphanin, uh, I think you mentioned it was by Thorne. They're one of a number of companies that, number. that have a decent, uh, that I shouldn't say that have a decent one. They're probably, you know, if you put this on a webinar, there are probably going to be 10 companies that say, <laughs> right. we have a decent right, one right. too. I'm sure there are others. <laughs> I'm sure there are, but, 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 but you've we've tested. Te we've tested. And that's important. Yeah, yeah. It, yes. We've tested a product by Thorne. Uh, which is a, a, a medium or large size supplement maker, mm -hmm. and their product is called Crucera right. SGS. But that only has glucoraphanin. And, right. And this right. actually kind of brings me back to what I, I kind of want to get back to this, and that is the, the microbiome. And so, you know, if you're, if you're taking a supplement that only has glucoraphanin and does not have the myrosinase enzyme there, mm -hmm. then you're relying on what you possibly potentially have in a species of bacteria in the mm -hmm. gut, which mm -hmm. maybe you can illuminate what that species of bacteria is, or um, if there's ways we can increase it, probiotics, obviously wiping out the gut bacteria. So people with you know, chronic antibiotic use may not be able to convert glucoraphanin very well to sulforaphane, I would presume. Right, you must have read one of our papers. So, <laughs> so in fact, we did, we did show that, um, this, was, this was a number of years ago now, we showed that if volunteers um, took a fleet enema, self-administered enema, which, which reduces the number of uh, bacteria in their, certainly in their large intestine by, I don't know, five or six orders of magnitude, um, and took a preoperative antibiotic course, um, in other words, something that one would take prior to having intestinal surgery, they essentially wiped out most uh, of the bacteria in their intestines. Um, and those people went from whatever their level of conversion of glucoraphanin to sulforaphane and its metabolites was, which was, as you heard earlier, 10 to 10%, 70 percent, yeah, yeah um, to nothing. So they, they lost their ability to, to convert glucoraphanin to sulforaphane. And then over the course of a couple of weeks, uh, I think, we, as I recall, we followed them. We one or two subsequent uh, challenges with glucoraphanin. Two weeks and four weeks later, I think, um, they gradually regained their ability to 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 do that reaction. Clearly, residual bacteria or new colonizers in their guts um, had myrosinase activity. So. We have net, we've looked at hundreds and hundreds of people's ability to do this conversion, um, and nobody can't do it. So everybody that everybody that's living and breathing appears to have myrosinase producing bacteria in their gut. But as we said earlier, it, obviously it's at very different levels. Um, just as clearly, 
although we don't do bacterial sequencing here, and this is a this is a new and very exciting field, the, the field of micro um, the microbiome. Um, but it's very clear that there are certain strains or certain species of bacteria that do have myrosinase activity. Others have shown that. There are, I believe one of them is an enterococcus. Um, there are lactobacilli that have uh, okay. myrosinase activity. There are bifidobacterium, I believe, that have it. And I, again, this is not my, this is not my field of expertise, so I may have misspoken. But okay. The bot- but the bottom line is that there are a number of species of bacteria that do this. Um, but not all, certainly not all bacteria in your gut. This whole incredibly fascinating field of, of uh, the, the, the microbiome um, has, has certainly shown that each of us has very, um, uh, has different populations and different ratios of different types of bacteria in our guts. Um, and certainly, to the degree that this is true, that's going to affect the amount of myrosinase activity in our guts. Um, I can tell you that we've done, I, I, we haven't published this, but we've done studies with, with mice in which we've challenged them with, uh, with glucoraphanin on a, on a regular basis over time. And we've, the goal was to try to push them um, by natural selection, to try to push them for ha- to have more bacteria with myrosinase, with more myrosinase activity. Um, the fact that we haven't published it means we didn't move the needle well enough or reproducibly enough to have a good story to tell, but certainly that's what we um, believe might happen. Um, having said that, um, when we look at real people and we query them as to their habits, um, there's no evidence to date that People who say they eat, you know, a pound of broccoli a day, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but people who eat a lot of broccoli don't necessarily convert glucoraphanin better than people who don't eat much at all. Hmm. Um, So that speaks to some other selective pressure on the gut um, on myrosinase-containing bacteria. Yeah, I would think that even just eating a healthy diet in general, when you're eating a diet high in in vegetables and, and fermentable fibers and things that are growing bifidobacteria and lactobacillus and you know all these in these uh, species of bacteria that are commensal bacteria that even that itself would potentially then you know increase your chances of being able to have more myrosinase because you're having more of this you know commensal microbial biome but I guess we don't know you know we don't know I think I think our hunch, both of our hunches are correct, um, but the, the proof is the proof is in the pudding. This this whole issue of probiotics. Yes, is, that is was going to be my next question. That would be uh, interesting. Well, it's do. it's fascinating. You know, in Europe, um, there there is a lot. Uh, I, I think the regulatory climate in Europe for probiotics is a bit um, more receptive than in the U.S. Um, you may you, you probably know more about it than I do, but um, I know that in the, that. The use of probiotics uh, is is seems to be increasing in the U.S. Yes. and studies by those who are expert in the field of probiotics mm-hmm. um, are are mixed. Right. Um, I mean, well, it's the there, same case as as the glucoraphanin sulforaphane supplements. A lot of the probiotics on the market. There's a lot of dead bacteria. A lot of garbage. Them, yeah. A lot of garbage. I mean, this is ubiquitous in all supplement. You know, it's yeah. it's. I think there was even a study showing something like 70% of like a lot of these supplements on the market are not actually what they say they are. They don't have yeah. the concentrations they say. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the, there is a lot of mixed data and, and that comes down to not, not having quality probiotics and also the numbers. That's another problem. The, Too low numbers right. of, of T- ten billion. Yeah, um, that's nothing. Or, right. You know, it's like a drop in the pool. It's not going to even move the needle. So. Um, yeah. But there are right. there is a, a, um, a probiotic out there that I have seen um, uh, at least two dozen publications, including mm-hmm. clinical trials in humans, and then there's you know more mechanistic studies in animals using VSL number three. It's called um, their mm-hmm. sachets, and they have 450 billion probiotics mm-hmm. per sachet, mm-hmm. and they have a mixture of um, lactobacillus and, and bifidobacteria and, and some other ones, but uh, showing efficacy in treating IBS, you know Crohn's. You know, so 
I think there are, you can find quality probiotics, but it's just, again, it's the same thing that you've seen in, in your field is finding the right one. A absolutely. Um, I think, um, you know, the, the, issue, the issue of the numbers of cells, I mean, to a, to a, a, a non-scientist consumer, billions sounds like a huge number. Totally. Well, yeah, it is, but it's still, you know, you can fit a billion bacteria on a, on a pinhead probably, well, maybe a teaspoon. Anyway, um, the, the issue there, though, is a lot of the issue is survival. So um, if, you, if you boast about having billions of bacterial cells of a certain type in yogurt, for example, and you are not on proton, not on proton pump inhibitors, so you have an acid stomach, and you send that yogurt through your stomach. How much of those, how many of those bacteria actually make it through the acid environment of the stomach? So, I mean, people have studied that certainly, but um, there are studies, as you say, with um, with a small number of specific strains showing showing effects. I think some of the more um, some of the more striking effects. Um, have to do with childhood diarrhea, and and um, uh, there are even studies showing effects on on asthma. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, effects on the brain. It's it's on, incredible. Yeah. 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 So I'm absolutely a believer that what goes on in the gut um, matters um, to the rest of the body. Uh, there's no question about it. Um, I think, as you say, a lot of the studies suffer from the fact that what's being given probably isn't couldn't have been expected to be efficacious anyway because it just died or didn't get there. Mm -hmm. um, but speaking of probiotics, um, wouldn't it be cool if someone came up with a myrosinase containing strain and put it in a probiotic formulation so that you could take that um, along with your cruciferous vegetables? So and cool. And, like <laughs> and it's, it, I, I believe that there are companies that are working on that now. Um, because certainly it, it's well enough known what strains of bacteria have myrosinase activity. Um, th there may be issues of getting that activity maintained. Um, you know, when you when you grow up uh, vats full of bacteria to freeze dry them to put them in a formulation. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I hope it's only a matter of time before we see formulations that contain myrosinase and that are safe. I mean, obviously, safety of these probiotic formulations is something that um, is a concern to the regulators, and it should be. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, I don't think we're quite there, but I, I hope we're getting there.